On its editorial page on March 6, 2011, the New York Times penned an editorial simply titled Thurgood Marshall. It was unusual on that page to have a life revisited after the passage of so much time. It was a lovely and tender tribute about the ongoing artistic homage being paid to Marshall's life. On the Supreme Court today, the editorial stated, there is no justice who seems similarly placed there to speak for the powerless by such a sweeping tide of history. There is no one whose life translates so magisterially into art. All of the attention gained Marshall new admirers. Tourists would troop out to Arlington National Cemetery to visit his gravesite. The cemetery set on land once owned by a prominent Confederate family. After the Civil War and the South's defeat, the land would be sold to the federal government. Old and bent and jubilee singing Negroes, fresh from the slave plantations, would trudge into Washington without places to stay, hoping their government would help them. Many who were penniless were reduced to foraging for food. They were often given housing on the site of the cemetery itself, a part of which was called Freedman's Village. These were the very people whom Secretary of War Edwin Stanton had appealed to for help during the massive manhunt to bring President Lincoln's assassin to justice. And when the final gust of breath had left the former plantation residents, they would be placed in spare wooden coffins and lowered into the earth on the same grounds where Thurgood Marshall, who had worked to free their descendants, would be laid to rest years later, allowing the wind to blow eternally over their gathered souls.